having an exceptional relationship with your spouse affects every single aspect of your life and is crucial for experiencing your dream life together. I'm Rob Murgatroyd. And I'm Kim Murgatroyd. Listen in on our honest, filter-free conversations as we navigate life and business together without killing each other. You'll learn by osmosis how to transform the friction you feel in your relationship into a purposeful foundation that will allow you to grow together. Welcome to the Friday Podcast. Kimberly, Christmas is coming. Murgatroyd, how are you today? I have such a giant list of things to do to get ready for this holiday, um, but I'm great. Are you stressed about what's coming up or are you excited? No, I'm excited. You're excited. I'm excited. I don't, you know, I used to stress about making sure everybody had all their gifts and when am I going to wrap them and all that stuff, but it always gets done. And so right now I'm enjoying the process of, you know, picking things out. And I, I, ha- I know you have a gift in your mind that you want, mm-hmm. but I have a gift in my mind that I want to give you and they're different. And I, I, I don't want to do both cause that would be overkill, but no, I think you should do both. Are you, are, <laughs> are you, are, are you thinking that I need to trade expectations for appreciation, which is one of the topics that we no, have today? I, listen, I know you want a specific jacket that you've wanted for a really long time. And I know you want it, but the reason that it's not in is because you're not meant to have it right now. And I'm meant to give you the gift that I want to give you. See it for, for those listening, I guess, which would be anybody else <laughs> that's hearing these words. Rob likes to tell me what he wants for Christmas. And in fact, often just goes and buys it and hands it to me. Because that's not true. I tell you what I want. I don't buy it. In fact, tell me the text that you received yesterday regarding said present. No, there. What was the text? Tell, the, the, text the text said, do you want to buy it or do you want me to buy it? OK, but so I think you see that, that that it was quite the opposite of what you just said. Yesterday it was. But in the past, you'd be like, yeah. So what I did is I just went down. I got that. You can just make that my Christmas present. Or you'll be like, I just went and got a suit. You could just make that my birthday gift. You are guilty 100% on yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah but I mensa. have something I want to give you, but that is not what we're talking about today. So today we're going to be talking about parenting strategies. But if you're not a parent or your kids are grown, stay on, stay listening, because you might be uh, needing these strategies for yourself. What Rob and I have done since Sophia was little is we take basically adult personal development and we apply it to our kids. And it worked with the first one. If you guys haven't listened, go back and listen to our interview with our older daughter, Demi, about what she learned. And she rattled off the success principles and Tony Robbins. And, you know, these things that we, that we teach them young may not land in the moment necessarily, but they, but they plant the seed and they come back around. But the ones we're going to talk about today are not that type. They're not the plant the seed type. The ones we're talking about today were instant changes in Sophia. All right. So I want to I want to set this up because I think for for those of you that are listeners of our Fry Date on the Fly, which is our premium member community, you'll know that the the last on the fly episode, I posed a question to Kim. And the question was, do relationships get better after having children or do they not? And it was a quite controversial topic. And I won't go into all the details because that's we basically it, fought it out live unedited for our, our member community. <laughs> there were tears, but it ended, it ended in hugs. But what came out of that long, heartfelt, difficult conversation was a new understanding for me of how being a father and in relationship and marriage can work in tandem to improve both of those things. God, that was like delivering another child to explain (laughs) that. Um, And what came out of it in the end was what are some ways that I can actually be a better father? So I want to set this up because I I think it's important not so much for women. Women don't seem to have this issue. And yes, I'm making it gender specific. But 
we have this, as men, we have this, you know, this giant desire and need to accomplish certain things, right? And a lot of us receive validation from these things that we accomplish, which is a whole other conversation. But fitting the family into your day, like not in theory where you're talking about it, but in actuality where you open up your planner and go, where is the kid? What hour is the kid today? And in quality time, not just like picking them up from school or, you know, seeing them in the hallway. Like we're talking about you and Sophia quality time one-on-one. Right. So I had this conversation with Kim and I was like, okay, I can definitely be doing better in this area and spending more time with her, more quality time. What would that look like? And I asked her to help me. And so I I was largely fighting for my limitations. You know, she would open it up and she'd say, okay, we'll do this. And I'd be like, no, 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 I can't because I have to prepare for podcasts there. And she'd be like, okay, well then at this time do that. I can't because that's where I'm going to the gym. And at this time do that. And we just kept going all the way around. And I was trying, I am a... I'm a systems guy. I need a system. Give me If you give me a system to do it, I won't not do it. I will only do it to a fault. So I knew that if I just found a time that I can plug this in in a way that, you know, I had the most energy and I was able to do this efficiently, I just knew that if I plugged it in at the right time, it was going to happen. And so... What we came up with was, okay, well, let's start small. What if in the morning she makes your coffee for you so she will, you know, get that thing that kids love to do. She'll go over to the Nespresso machine. She'll hit the, she'll put the pot in, she'll hit the button. And like, if you've ever watched uh, the dog whisperer with Caesar Milan, you know, puppies like to have a, a task. So you give the puppy a task, and my daughter is very much like me in that rituals are extremely important for her. Uh, Virgo. She's a Virgo. So Kim gave the suggestion, what if she makes the coffee and she brings it into you? And then I was like, yeah, but if she brings it into me at that time when she gets up, I'm meditating. Okay, well, what if I meditate first and then, okay, so we worked out all the logistics so that I got up at the same time so I didn't have to get up any earlier. And I changed the order of my morning routine around. I'm giving you all this granular detail because people like me need this. And I changed all of the order around so that I was sitting and ready, waiting for her at 7.15. And it worked like a charm. But at what do you do at 7.15? She comes in and it's not I'm just about, she brings no, you I'm coffee. To, I'm about to explain okay, that. You're getting I'm that. about to explain that. So work like a charm. We had everything all lined up. So then... I said, okay, well, what will we do? Because I only have a couple of minutes with her, but I want my day to start with a connection to her for five or 10 minutes. What would that look like? So there's a book that I create every year, and this is an apt time to tell this story because it's the time of year where I give the book. If you go on to, into the app store and you download an app called Day, D-A-Y, one, I don't know if it's O-N-E or the number one, but you'll find it. It is an app where you can upload a photo, a few sentences, and you can create a book of all the photos and sentences. And so what I do throughout the year is wherever I am with her, I always try and have, you know, if we're at lunch somewhere, I'll take a selfie with her and I And if we're, you know, whatever we're doing, I'll just take a picture of either her alone or the two of us, but it's primarily leaning towards she and I, it's a daddy daughter book. And at the end of the year you have, I mean, I would say probably, I don't know, 150 pages or something like that of the year in photos. And so usually the first or second week of December, I'll order the book and it'll be the book for that year. And so I've have, and you give it to her for Christmas and I give it to her for Christmas. And so now I have two of those books that are sitting on my desk now because I've been doing it for two years and I'll, and I just got the notice today that the book will be delivered today or tomorrow for the third year. And so I said, okay, when she comes in, I'm going to have her choose which of the two books. Now there'll be three, which of the two books does she want? And she can turn to any page that she wants. And of course, because she's a Virgo, she has to do the first book and she's got to go in order and she has to, you know, so she opens it up 
And I said, do you want to read it or I want to read it? And that's our, that's our ritual. Some days she says me, some days she wants to do it. And, you know, this morning we did photos in Greece. In, uh, we, were, we were on our way to Greece and we were in Athens. And it was where she walked for the first time into a store in the airport by herself to purchase a stuffed animal that I gave her money for. And it was two or three pictures that depicted her going in, her with the cash register lady, and her holding the stuffed animal. And so we talked this morning about that experience. It's just like, I remember that. And then I give her a big hug, and I say, today is going to be a great day. And she says, I know, Daddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Big kisses. And then she leaves. Do you know what's so great about this is that that book, there's a few things. Uh, Well, let me start with this. So one thing that's really great about this is I remember as a kid, my dad was a basketball coach. Okay. He's three feet tall and he's a basketball coach. Go figure. And every game day, he would bring me into his closet and he would say, can you choose my shirt and tie every single time? And I would say, what suit are you wearing? And he would tell me which color suit I would choose the shirt. I would choose the tie. And that's what he wore. And even if it was mismatched, crazy, whatever, he wore it. And it gave me such pride and satisfaction. And it just gave me that couple minutes. So the takeaway here is that giving the kid, giving your kid a purpose, right, in the family to do something like that, that's meaningful where they're contributing is one thing. But the second thing, and I think the bigger impact is you know, Rob, you used to feel like to make an impact in your relationship, you would have to clear half of your day and spend half of your day, you know, entertaining. Rob is Disney dad. So if Rob does daddy Sophia day, he's Disney dad. He's taking her on a Ferris wheel. He's buying her, you know, cotton candy. It Like I want to go on daddy Sophia day. It's a fun, it's not just hanging out, you know, it's, it's a, it's an event. And it doesn't need to be like that. And in fact, it needs to be daily activities. It can't just be once a week and you're on a Ferris wheel. It needs to be daily activities. It's like I get at night, the blessing I get is I put her to bed at night. So I get to read the book and we get to do our our gratitude journal that she and I actually created. And uh, if you want to grab our gratitude journal or, or check it out. It's really amazing. It's for ages, basically five to 10. We'll put it in the, in the show notes, but it's a link to Amazon. We created this ourselves and we do this beautiful gratitude journal each night where there's three questions. She answers them. I answer them. And we get that five minutes to just connect. That's our time to do it. Rob gets coffee and the day one book in the morning. And those little moments of five minutes are so powerful and impactful in your relationship. And I think that is where the really good stuff is. Here's what I learned. I learned that it's not quality time. It's time. Yeah. It's just time. And I think with a lot of people, when they're thinking about this, they're like, I need to make, I I don't know, maybe women don't think the the same way. But guys, I know it's like, we are very, women seem to be able to do multiple tasks extremely well. Men don't. And I think that's been proven scientifically. So we want to carve out the event. It's going to be a three hour block and we're going to start here and we're going to go there. But you're right. Largely, it is just five minutes here, 10 minutes there stacked up. But of real connection, of real connection, it's real connection. And so that's that's our first parenting strategy. Give them a purpose And take five minutes with your kid, do a gratitude journal, do the day one book, give them a purpose in your life, let them choose your clothes, let them make your coffee. If I'm making banana bread, I ask her to weigh everything. And I, well, my thing with her in the kitchen is is I always ask her to crack all the eggs. She's done that since she was two years old. She's like a professional egg cracker. Can I set the next one up? Yeah, go ahead. So my wife has been just looking fine. She's been looking fly lately. (laughs) And 
you know, I was talking to her and I was like, what the hell's going on over here? Do you, are, you, are you seeing some special doctor for this? Why do you look so good? You, you're like, you, you, you're sexy, you get, like, you're thin, you're beautiful. What, what's going on? And she said, you know, I've just been listening to my body. You know, like if I'm hungry, I eat. If I'm not hungry, I don't. And there's no rules. You know, I'm not... I'm not waking up in the morning and doing a cold plunge, <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, eating before this and not after that. And I'm not, but I'm just listening to my body. And that naturally moved into a conversation where I noticed one day, Sophia was eating something and she said, uh, Kim was like, are you, uh, do you like it? And she's like, yeah, no, I like it. I'm just, I'm just done. And she instantaneously, Kim, instantaneously responded and she said, good job listening to your body. And, you know, I noted it and I was like, okay. And then the next time she was eating something and we had, let's say, pizza and she ate, you know, a slice or two and she, she was done. She said, I'm done. And Kim said, good job listening to your body. And I've been noticing that that little statement of listening to your body is teaching a kid how to gauge multiple things. One is her intuition. What is her body trying to tell her? Two is not to move into overeating, which is unhealthy, and to create a life skill that she will be able to use for the rest of her life. And that then translated to me where I started to go, I need to listen to my body. <laughs> I think I'm not listening. I think I just keep eating. So, so bravo, Thank you. Uh, Kimberly on that. Do you have anything uh, to add to that? Yeah, I'd like to add a few things. So the first thing is, you know, listen, we live in Italy. We live in the land of pasta and pizza where they have sugar for breakfast. And it's amazing. We drink wine every day. And we were here in 2019 and we were here for like three months. And I was so shocked when I got home that my weight didn't fluctuate at all. Like not one pound was gained when we lived in Italy for three months. And I ate my face off. Like I ate everything, shoved it in because it was delicious. And yes, everyone's like, well, you're walking more. No, I am walking more, but I, I, you cannot walk your way out of a four course Italian dinner. Like there's no, I, there's no amount of walking that you could combat the, the additional calories of that. Right. So yes, walking is a thing, but also the quality of the food is a thing. The portion of the food is a thing. There's a million things. So I was shocked. And then I went to LA, we moved to LA and within three months, I gained 20 pounds. And this is embarrassing. I've never actually talked about this. This was before the pandemic. So everyone that's going like, oh, well, it's pandemic weight. No, 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 this was before. It was embarrassing because fitness was my life. I'm an exercise physiologist by trade. I was a fitness competitor and I used to diet Rob down for shows and myself. Like I have been super, super lean and to get just gain 20 pounds was crazy. So I actually went to the doctor and we checked hormones and we did this whole thing and nothing we did worked. And then we came to Italy. I'm still 20 pounds heavier when I come to Italy. And what would you think would happen, right? You think that I would just continue and eat now pasta every day and pizza multiple times a week and I would gain weight. Well, one year after arriving here, I don't weigh myself often, honestly, but one year after arriving here, I stood on the scale and I couldn't believe the number. And I looked back in my phone because my, um, I, I love using Isogenics. It's the company that I've used over 10 years and I, they do, uh, what do you call it? Isobody challenge. And so every four months you have to like put your weight and take pictures and they give you a coupon for products. So I looked back to see what my weight was at one year of living in Italy. I had lost 18 pounds and I told Rob, I was like, I lost 18 pounds. He's like, how'd you do it? I'm like, I don't know because I didn't do anything different. I, he sees what I eat. I eat, I eat pasta literally every day. I'll make pasta for lunch. I'll eat pasta for dinner. And I said, the only thing different is that I'm not 
harping on this. You got to eat three times a day. You got to eat six times a day. You got to fast until two. You got to, I mean, when we came here, we were using, what do you call it? Glucose monitor to see how the pasta changed. Like it was so fucking American of us to come here with a goddamn glucose monitor to see if pasta would like, a, we did podcasts on this. Like how goddamn stupid are we? Now I see people with the glucose monitor going, I'm going to see what a potato does. No shit. It's going to raise your fucking glucose. It's supposed to. Your body is supposed to raise the glucose. Should we like, tell him about me drinking the olive oil at the restaurant? Oh my God. Rob would, or he would be like, can I get olive oil? I need to have three tablespoons before I eat the pasta. Like this is, this is stupid. Okay. I'm telling you right now, this is fucking dumb. Everyone wants to biohack everything. Here's what I learned. Okay. Living in Italy. You don't fucking biohack here, okay? Biohacking is natural. No one's fucking biohacking. You are not cold plunging in the morning. You're not biohacking wearing a glucose monitor. Like, and, and they have a life expectancy, I think that's seven years higher than the average American. Like, I can't do it. So anyway, back to this. So I started, I, I started to realize I'm just intuitively eating. If I'm hungry in the morning, I eat breakfast. If I'm not hungry in the morning, I don't eat breakfast. And I go through my day intuitively eating what I want. Fast forward one night, and this is sad because the, the moms out there that have little girls, this could make me cry. Sophia came in and she said, mommy, a little boy at school called me fat today. Technically, he called her a fat cat, which he meant fat. He wasn't telling her she was cool. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, he said I was fat and I should stop eating. And I said, well, that's not okay. And of course I did all the mom things. And I said, that's not okay. I'm not okay with that. I said, you're beautiful. You're eight. And we don't need to worry about that. And so a few weeks later, you know, we had a conversation about it. A few weeks later, she said, I think I want to make healthier choices in my food. I said, okay, I can support healthier choices because she's eight and she wants to eat potato chips and pizza and all in candy all the time. I said, so let's make healthier choices. What would a healthier lunch look like? What would a healthier dinner look like? And so we had conversations about healthy food choices. And I also was super clear that treats and stuff like that are part of life. And I don't want her to not have them or to think she can't have them. And that absolutely nothing is off limits, but we just need to listen to our body. So there are days where I listen to my body and I told her that I just want fruit, like fruit feels good in my body right now. And she was like, yeah, there, there are days I just want to eat an apple. I was like, then you should eat an apple. And so we had this conversation that basically is about intuitive eating without you know, reading a book or having a, a, a strategy of intuitive eating. So that's where that came from. So now when she eats, it's not about her weight. It's not about anything. And she still eats pizza, but instead of eating eight slices of pizza, she'll stop at four and she'll say, can I take the rest home? And maybe if I'm hungry later, I'll have a slice or maybe I can have it for lunch tomorrow. So she's learning to intuitively eat the conversation about her weight has not come up. And by the way, if you've seen my kid, she's not overweight. You know, it's, it's sad, um, actually, that kids are so mean. All right. Let's, let's move on to the last one, which is trading expectation for appreciation. Okay. So this one is interesting. The other thing with Sophia that I had started to notice was that she had a problem with everything. And we have always been, well, I'm positive. Rob does the work to lean positive and put himself in and create a mindset of positivity. For me, it's a bit more natural. For him, it's a bit not as natural. But we both lean pretty positive. But I've started to realize lately that if I say, hey, so if we're going to go to this restaurant, she's like, ugh, I don't like the sauce there. Or if I say, hey, uh, we're having a party on Sunday and all the kids are coming over, she'll be like, oh my God, they're going to, I know what's going to happen. And she'll go into something negative. So after talking to her for a little while about all of these things, I said, you know, Soph, I'm starting to see that every time I kind of bring anything up, you tell me what's wrong with it. And 
she gave me feedback of why she feels that way. And then it dawned on me. She has an expectation of all of these things. So with restaurants, there's one restaurant here that when she gets a pasta pomodoro, pasta with tomato sauce, she would lick the plate with the sauce. Like the sauce to her is the best sauce in the world. So she expects every single restaurant to have the exact same sauce because it's pasta pomodoro. So why would it be different to an eight-year-old? And so I realized that was an expectation problem. And then I talked to her about the kids coming over. And when she has friends over, she's like Rob. So if you can imagine Rob doing his mastermind events where he ha- he's orchestrating this experience from when they arrive to when, you know, the hotel check-in to the first dinner and he's orchestrating every minute, she basically wants to do this when she has a play date. And they, she has all these plans in her head about how this is going to go down, except these kids are not paying her for experiences. They're coming over to play. And so sometimes they come over to play and they have a different experience. They see a different game that she didn't pull out and they want to play that, or they want to watch a different movie than her. And so her expectation is once again crushed. And I started to go through all of these things she complains about. And I started seeing that this is an expectation problem. So I said, Sophia, I have another little quote for you. We have a jar of quotes in her room. And I said, here's the next quote. She said, what is it? I said, trade your expectation for appreciation. And she said, what does that mean? And so I explained to her, we're going to have a party on Sunday. I don't want you to have any expectation whatsoever. We're going to bring out all your games. We're going to bring out card games. You guys can play Mario Kart. You guys can do anything you want. But what I don't want you to do is have an expectation of how the day will go. And she did, and it was an amazing day. And she left, every, all the kids left, and she, her heart was full. She was happy, and she really enjoyed herself she, for the first time, to be honest, because usually her expectations have been crushed. And I said, what was different? And she said, I didn't have any expectations. I said, that's right. And so now that's what we're doing. So if you, if you have these quotes in your head, like I'll give you a few more. So I made this jar for her. I got this big plastic jar. I cut out a bunch of hearts and I wrote things on it that I use like comparison is the thief of joy. And so every time she comes home and she says to me, mommy, um, so-and-so's artwork looked better than mine. And I don't even think I'm a good artist. I said, what does that heart say? And she said, comparison is the thief of joy. I said, so you're comparing yourself to little Sally and you're looking at little Sally saying hers is better. She might be looking at yours because art is subjective and saying yours is better, but you're allowing that comparison to Sally to take the joy away from art. You love art. So don't do that, right? Let's not do that. So anyway, I, I made this jar for her and whenever she's feeling crappy, she sticks her hand in the jar and pulls one out or... Whenever I see that there's a specific one she needs, I'll go find it and read it and we'll read, we'll talk about it again. That's so good. Do you know where that quote comes from? Tony Robbins. No. Well, that one is a Tony Robbins one, the expectation quote. But do you know where the thief of joy quote comes from? Teddy Roosevelt. I learned it yesterday. I heard it in the podcast. Isn't that interesting? interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can you name the president before Teddy Roosevelt or after? I. I, Can you name the year Teddy Roosevelt was president? did, Did you say Roosevelt? What do you say, Roosevelt's? Roosevelt. I think it's, it, there's two O's. It has to be Roosevelt's, like a rooster. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say Teddy Roosevelt. Okay, how many O's do you think he needs to be in his name to I say Roosevelt? I don't Ro- know. You're talking to someone from New England. It can't be Roosevelt, because Rose would be R-O-S-E. It's one O. Rose, like a rose. Right. Ruse is two O's. Okay, so let's recap here. So the three strategies... Why, Roosevelt we, is so much more interesting. The three strategies we talked about is, number one, giving your kids a purpose and also taking the five minutes intentionally. That's the word. It's five intentional minutes, mm, right? And giving word. them a purpose. Yeah. The second one is teaching your kids about intuitive eating. And the third one is trading your expectations for appreciation or any other quote that you feel would be applicable to your kid's situation. That's it, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. The hustle culture is going to encourage you to keep grinding away at work to accomplish your dreams. 
and I'm going to tell you to do the opposite. Break out from behind your desk and join us on our next Work Hard, Play Hard Platinum event in the crystal clear blue waters of the south of France. So Kim and I created this experience because we learn best by hanging out with bright, successful, interesting entrepreneurial couples in fascinating destinations around the world. So come join us for this platinum event in the south of France. It is limited to only eight couples and is by application only. So get yourself out of the day-to-day -day operations of running your business. Meet some fantastic entrepreneurial couples. Get re-inspired to innovate your business again and enjoy the beauty of the South of France. Check out the link in the description to learn more.